What's up guys, it's Sam, been a while. Uh, so I was in the middle of making a bunch of shells for the uh, holiday next month and uh, uh, it's time for me to ram some more spilettes. So I decided I was gonna make a quick video going over the process and ex kind of explaining what a spilette is. Um, go over the list of materials and we'll get started. All right, for, for those of you who don't know what a spilette is, essentially all it is is a handmade time fuse. It, essentially, it's just a paper tube with consolidated black powder. Um, you can adjust the depth of the black powder to adjust the amount of time you want. Um, this is the end that, this is a finished spilette, just for reference. This is the end that takes fire from the from the leader pipe, and this is the end that shoots fire into the shell after a certain amount of time that you uh, you want. I prefer to use spilettes just for the fact that they're handmade. I mean, part of what I like about this stuff is just making something from scratch, and it's just one more component that, uh, you know, you, it's just made from raw materials and chemicals, and I just, I like that part about it. You, there's nothing wrong with time fuse. I, it's a little bit faster. Um, it's, I mean, not a whole lot faster in my opinion by the time you get it all cross-matched and punched and all that stuff. But like at the end of the day, it's just a matter of preference. Um, so you're gonna need uh, some some type of tooling. I, I got mine from Caleb at Woody's Rocks. It, all it is is just a base. Um, Spilette, Folk, I, I reference Falconelli, uh, py the Pyrotechnica series. Um, so for three inch single brake shells, it's um, the inside diameter of the tube calls for five sixteenths. Outside diameter is just over half inch and a two inch length tube with the powder charge being between one and one quarter inches. So you, the split rammers typically come uh, with engraved increments every quarter inch. And I just like to color them black for quarter inch, green for half, three quarters blue and red one inch, just so I know the depth of my rammer at all times. Um, you're gonna need tubes. Uh, once again, Caleb at Woody's Rocks, he sells these uncut tubes. I think you get a 10 pack of them for like 11 or 12 bucks. They're great tubes, they're hard as a rock. You ain't got to worry about burn through or anything. They're just, they're just little versions of his rocket tubes, uh, essentially. Or you can buy uh, like 50 packs of the pre-cut three-inch tubes. I make a lot of three-inch cells, so it's it just makes more sense for me to buy the, the longer tubes for me to cut down myself. Um, you're going to need a couple pieces of the black match we made in, a, in another video. You're going to need it all a mallet of some sort um you're gonna need string a scoop for your powder and then your powder obviously uh, falconelli recommends a scoop that gives you an increment between three sixteenths and one quarter inch per increment um i use a 0.7 cc uh, powder scoop from a Lee, yeah, it's Lee. Um, two of these gives me around just under a quarter inch, so it's pretty and it's small enough to where I, it's it's pretty easy to dump into this little tube without needing to use a funnel. Um, oh yeah, and then just for reference, that's what a spilette looks like on top of a shell. This isn't finished, obviously. It's I just paste wrapped it earlier. I need the finish drying. I just wanted to show you guys that. Um, you're going to need some gum, craft tape, and, uh, and that should be it. All right. I think I forgot to talk about the base, uh, before. So the, the base that I got from, from Woody's, it's a double-sided base. Some larger shells call for a larger outside diameter spillet tube. So one side's drilled for that, which I believe it's like a 5 eighths or 11 16 something like that. And the other side is the smaller, just standard half inch outside diameter spillet tube. You're just gonna stick your, um, your spillet tube firmly in that base, make sure it's all the way down. Um, and then you're ready to ram your first increment. Oh, 
because that first increment can kind of be hard to get your rammer in there if you don't wall or your tube out after you cut it. Um, I like to use a pounding post, like hand ram rockets and everything on it. Um, so you don't want to hit like a home run whenever you're swinging your mallet, but uh, just like I said, eight to 10 moderate wax is more than suffice. It, I, you're better off hitting it more times than hitting it harder less times, if that makes sense. Say so we're just over a quarter inch there. So I'm gonna back off my scoop just a hair. It's important not to over ram each increment or it's not gonna burn right. It's 10 wax. And that was a perfect increment size. And just so we're following along, it's a we started with a two inch tube. I have my rammer marked with a red line every inch. So we would have started here. That's three increments, quarter inch, half inch, three quarters of an inch. So we're right on track where we wanted to be. one inch so on this one after we get start to get close like that I'm just gonna do one scoop because your last increment we're gonna do something a little different so we're right at about an inch and an eighth so that last increment most spillet tooling comes with two rammers, one flat, which is what we started with, and then one with a little nipple on the end. I don't know if you guys can see that good. Um, the reason for that is, I, I'm, my understanding of it is the, the extra surface area that the, the dimple creates just makes it easier to pass fire to the matched end. Um, so that's why we do that. And on that last increments, since we just have a, eighth to make up still. I keep a, a smaller powder measure with my powder just because I've done a few of these. I know how many it's going to take um, and that should give us exactly an eighth or damn near. Look at that. Exactly an inch and a quarter which just so we keep following along. There's three quarters of an inch of my rammer still buried in that tube. Um, so then it's rammed. Sometimes, sometimes these splats can be a pain coming out out of the base if you whack it too hard. Um, let's kind of wiggle it around. All right, I'm gonna cut that part out just because it was a pain in the ass, and you guys don't need to see that. But we got it out. Um, and it's, that's, a that's a split ready to, ready to be nosed and matched. I'm going to do one more for demonstration, just full speed, just so you guys can see how quick it really goes. Um, cause that's one thing I, I see online. A lot of people talking about, you know, they don't like splits just because of how time consuming they, they think they are. But like I said, in my opinion, I don't find them to be that much more time consuming than than time fuse by the time you know you either split your fuse or or punch it or whatever and then match it I just I don't find it to be that much faster
That's it. That's simple. It's ready to be nosed and matched. That's all we got left to do. Give me a second and we'll, uh, I'll go over that process. All right, we got three spillets here ready to be nosed and, and matched. Um, we're gonna take our black match that I talked about earlier and cut it into little, just a, a few pieces here. Cut them into two, two and a half inch pieces. That's one thing about spallets, they do eat up some match, but once again, worth it in my opinion. All right, just take, I can't remember off the top of my head how many pieces are actually recommended, but I just, I stick as many as I can in there. I mean, not to the point where you're forcing them in there, but I make sure that cavity's full just like that. If you wanted to be more conservative with your match, you could probably just cut into, you know, inch and a half long pieces. Because once we're done, I usually cut them all flush anyway. I accidentally grabbed a couple pieces of doubled up match. That's why I'm, if you can, just grab single strands and feel like they work better in these. All right, so our match is, is nice and not too tight, but snug enough. And in, in Pyrotechnica, it actually calls for pasted paper, but I always, I always use just uh, gum tape calls for two turns of pasted paper. Um, I usually just, I think I, I think this is inch and a half of gum tape. I just split the difference half on the tube, half over the match. Just a piece of tape, a few inches long, a couple inches long, and about three inches usually does about two turns, just like that, and then kind of. Just consolidated around the match there. So you ain't gotta be perfect, it's gonna get set on fire, so. And it's just like anything else, the more you do with these, the quicker you'll get. So that's called nosing. And for this next part, I, just a personal preference, I've learned it's good to use the base to stand these straight up. Take a piece of twine and throw a clove hitch over the nosing, just like that. Hopefully you guys can see, tie that off. And cotton string, twine, whatever you got. I don't think it matters all that much. You don't want it right on top of the tube, but relatively close. Uh, all right, so now they're matched. And just for, it's probably a little bit overkill, 
but I like to just throw a little tiny dollop of glue, just white Elmer's glue or whatever you got on that knot, just to make sure it doesn't back itself off and kind of smear it in just a little bit. That's probably a little bit overkill, but it's just something I've grown accustomed to doing. And then last but not least, underneath the string on your nosing, take your awl, just poke a couple holes. I usually just do one on each side. That's just in case, with so many pieces of match in there, that's another reason why I use so many pieces of match. It, it lessens the problem, but sometimes if you tie that knot too tight, it'll choke your fire off and it'll delay the fire passing into the shell. So the two holes below the knot kind of ensures the fire is gonna get to your, to your burst powder um, in a timely fashion. So just poke a couple holes on all your spillets. And then just cause sometimes, especially on the smaller shells, it can sometimes get cramped in there. So I just cut all my black match nice and uniform. And there you have it. We got uh we got some spillets ready to go. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna fuse one up just for demonstration purposes and take it outside and uh set it off and and that's that. I appreciate you guys watching. One more thing I wanted to mention before the video ended. Uh, so on your, this is something you typically do right before you lift and leader your shell. It's almost complete. Um, after pasting in, sometimes your, it, sometimes the end of the spillet here will get uh, paste or glue or whatever built up on it. So you want to make sure that's really clean, but also just it helps to ensure that it takes fire well. You'll take your awl or whatever and just put a little, you know, scratch in it just like that. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, it just, one, it increases the surface area too. It gives it fresh powder. Um, it just ensures that it takes fire easier. And then one more thing are these, um, if you're going to pre-make a bunch, it's good to have a, a bunch of palettes. It's good to have them. Or I typically keep them on whenever I'm in the middle of building the shell. Um, these cap lugs, uh, if your local hardware store has like a Hillman section, uh, you, I've seen them there at like uh, Rural King or Ace or Home Depot or whatever. Um, and Caleb also sells them. I'm gonna keep shilling for Caleb because I love Woody's Rocks. Um, they're, they're great to have. He has them real cheap, a lot cheaper than the hardware store just um, for your information. Uh, I just wanted to mention those couple things before I ended the video. All right, so I got one of these spillets matched up, fused, so I could show you guys how they burn. Perfect. Thanks for watching, guys.